Dude, Doom Eternal looks sick. I am so pumped. Cyberpunk 2077? That looks like GTA meets Synthwave. Oh my fucking god, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get this game. Oh, who can forget Smash Bros? Literally no one misses out on Smash Bros. Well, except for Waluigi. Overwatch got a hamster. Okay. That's kind of weird. wonder how that's going to play out in the long run. Still cool. Still cool. Oh, shit! How could I have forgotten? It's summer, which means the next big TF2 update is out. Oh. So, if you're watching this video, that means that there was no large TF2 update this summer. Now, this video is just here to voice my theories as to why we didn't get any large update this year, let alone the heavy update. Now, I do realize that the TF team at Valve is about the size of an Ethiopian food eating competition, but even the small numbers of staff working on the game shouldn't really be an excuse for a mostly community driven game. Seriously, the last update made completely in house at Valve was Smithsmith 2014. There have been aspects in each update that Valve worked on, but for the most part, updates over the last four years have almost been completely made up from submissions on the workshop. So, the micro team in charge of TF2 isn't a valid excuse when it comes to lack of updates, but surely there has to be some sort of reason why it's taking so long for there to be an update. Idea number one. A massive update with no problems made in-house. No. Idea two. Lack of heavy content on the workshop. Okay, so this one is a bit of a stretch, but when I was browsing around the workshop, there only seemed to be a distinct lack of heavy content. Now, my thinking is that the powers that be have to select from a very narrow gap for new innovative items for the heavy update. It's like, do I choose Beard 1 or Beard 2? Hmm. Frankly, there are some great gems in the workshop for heavy, but they are so few and far between. I imagine deciding which one of these items should be added to Spice of Heavy has to have some level of difficulty in it. That or Valve will have to make some content in-house. So yeah, looks like we're gonna wait till Valve is appeased at what we make for them. Idea number three, waiting for Halloween. So this is probably the most plausible reason why there hasn't been an update. Valve doesn't feel like making two updates a year, so instead they'll just bundle it with the Halloween update like they did for the Pyro update last year. I imagine Valve will use the excuse, well, making an update is hard work guys, so maybe Halloween update next year. Like, come on, seriously? But don't hold your breath for new Halloween items, especially since it's already this close to Halloween and we haven't gotten any updates so far. This is probably what Valve is doing, because why why have a fun update? Fucking just, just release one update every other year and fucking guy you got yourself a game right there. Idea number four, Rider Cycle sucks. Alright. Well, this has been a long time coming. I'm over here criticizing Valve for taking forever to release a single update, meanwhile I take a month to make a guide nowadays. But I do have a few reasons why videos nowadays take a lot longer than before, and I feel like I owe you guys an explanation. Firstly, I could talk about real life stuff and that I'm more than just rider cycle, but I think you guys know that, or you should know that at least. Instead, I want to tell you guys all about a little thing called lack of motivation. motivation. Basically, this entails me sleeping till 2 in the afternoon, barely eating, and long sessions of staring at myself in the mirror, plus a bunch of other sad and depressing shit that you guys don't really need to know about. But this never stopped me fully, just stopped me from finishing a lot of things. So, I feel like it's about time I show you guys what I've been doing this summer with all their incomplete glory. And, naturally, some projects will be farther along than others. So... This is going to be a little look behind the scenes here, where we're just going to dive through some of the things that I have never made. The first thing that I think a lot of people might kind of recall was this short film idea I was working on. Uh, it was kind of interesting, and it was sort of a thing about happiness and really edgy. Uh, but see this editing, where I convert a day scene into a night scene, which made up majority of the film, was incredibly hard to do, very taxing, and not something I really wanted to do, and after a few months I lost focus and, you know, gave up on the project. But this is still like a pretty decent test scene of what I could do, given me not being a fucking dip-ass. Another thing I did was this completely animated SFM uh, talk show. And this is the intro, which was mostly refined and animated. 
It was all right, I think. Nothing too top-notch, but it was it was all right. I think it was a fun concept. But then again, I gave up because it was very taxing. And of course, there were some other versions of it that never really came to fruition. I even got the audio right here, uh, such as my audio and Big Joey's audio, who was the first guest. There's some other things in it as well, but just animating it was incredibly hard and not something I ever really wanted to do. Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, you know how the new algorithm thing came out and it like kind of messed up everyone's pay well that kind of started like right when i started <laughs> oh i got you i see what you're saying yeah but like the unboxing so you're saying we should like, shoot up youtube hq oh well i think that's already been done but um no like shoot up again like, <laughs> hey, man i don't no no we should not should not shoot up youtube headquarters that's not what i'm promoting You ever, you ever, uh, um, uh, um, think of suicide? Think of it? Like, the concept of it? No, no, like, you, you, you uh, you, you put a forty-four magnum in your mouth. Yeah, 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 of course. So, um, you, you, you like drugs, right? What? No, no, I, no, I've never, I've never done drugs in my life. Don't don't worry. I can I can cut this out. Uh, you like drugs, though, like for real, though, right? Uh, well, in real life, I'm actually allergic to uh, to to gluten. Uh, I've got like an intolerance to it. And those are the only footage that I've actually finally refined. Uh, next, we're gonna be going into some scripts because what's more fun than? Recording and writing audio, but never really doing much with it after that. So the first one is this thing called Brutal Paws of Fury, and it was a very JonTron inspired thing. Uh, it was a lot of live action. Uh, again, it was an interesting concept. This was before I came back to TF2. I never really finished it, mainly because I just... I don't think it was that funny looking back at it, and I don't feel like... Uh, you guys deserve something as low quality as this. I do have some footage that I'll put up here of unedited audio from the live action bits. I did run an emulator to get some of the gameplay footage, and it was slightly edited, but again, never really finished. Well, I only have one thing to say to you. Fuck is wrong with you? Listen, listen, it's just a bear and some steroids. Alright, now does anyone have any cocaine? Please and thank you. Oh wait, I know! It's because this game makes zero fucking sense. Guys, stop laughing at me. My mom says I'm beautiful. And my tits are beautiful, too. Boop. Got him. That'll teach you for sleeping with my wife. Thank Christ that's over. No more furry fighting games for this guy. It's not like Sega made their own version of it. Because who wouldn't want a Sega version of it? Sega doesn't... Sega's pretty good, right? I mean, Sega never gets in on any furry stuff, do they? Sega kind of just does what they do. They don't They don't like to get in with furry stuff, do they? Am I dead yet? Am I dead yet? Am I dead yet? Oh, actually, really hurt. Ow. Now, this one, Heavy Takes No Skill. I was actually very, very proud of this video, and it was pretty much done. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I had all the audio recorded right here, uh, it was set up good to go, short little funny video, and basically the premise was I'd be playing a game, so I'd be like, Heavy takes no skill. Then I'd play through a bunch of other classes, like Soldier and Scout, and be like, oh yes, of course, this is actually skill. And then I'm like, you know what, This is, it's just a video game, I gotta get real skill, and in that I'd put on some really dorky 80s looking attire, and go like work out in the local park, or something stupid. Again, very JonTron inspired. 
but unfortunately the clothing I ordered never really arrived besides the pink headbands. So that's kind of where that project died, mainly because I was running out of time and I kind of felt really bad about not uploading in a while. Now this one was a bit more of an interesting one, I think. Uh, this one I might even be coming back to it, but I really, really doubt it, so. It was a video where I was talking about Hotline Miami's jacket and sort of explaining how a silent protagonist just works in Hotline Miami, at least. And it was a sort of interesting video theory, I think, about Hotline Miami. And again, I like making Hotline Miami content. The thing is, Hotline Miami doesn't have a lot of content to it. That's kind of why I was kind of reaching for dust there. This I just never really finished because during this time I was busy with work and then TF2 was, was becoming more prominent back in my life and I just never really finished it. Another one based off that jacket thing was story in video games. Now, this was kind of a video I was pretty proud of. I never really got around to it, again, because Team Fortress 2 was coming back up into my life, and I wanted to do more Team Fortress 2 content rather than just video games in general, but this actually spawned that Hotline Miami video I just previously mentioned. This was sort of explaining what makes a good story play out in a video game, and thinking about it, that's kind of simplistic. Now, this other one seriously would have gotten me into some hot water, but, luckily for me, I well, didn't do it because I'm not a fucking idiot. But, but, I wrote this entire script here as a sort of opinion against Uncle Dane's why random crits should be removed. Never bothered to record this because I realized that saying anything against what everyone else believes will only get me farther rejected from the current TF2 community. But... Just so you guys know, I do have my reasons as to why I'm okay with random crits. And I've just been invited to cute anime girls and cuter something, something, and something else. Anyway, back to what I was saying. This video was sort of just out there, just supposed to disprove a lot of Uncle Dane's points, explaining that it's a necessary evil, and just things like that, and sort of more focused on the casual issue of TF2. Again, decently worded script. I feel like if I made this, it probably would have done well in views, but it would have hurt my reputation among other Team Fortress 2 content creators. Then, of course, there was that podcast idea I had called Late Night Coffee, and it was interestingly set up. This is how it, the format would have been. If you want to read it, you can. And I got most of the way done. I recorded like three sample episodes but then ultimately scrapped it because I never bothered to film the intro. And that's legitimately the only reason I never made it, I'm not gonna lie. Just because I've never filmed the intro, I was like, eh. And that's pretty much been my last couple of months. Working on a lot of things, never finishing them, and then feeling really, really bad about it later on. I hope this was interesting, somewhat. And I doubt we'll get an update till Halloween, so... As always, have a swell rest of your day, and peace out.